Hello everyone, welcome back to my Realism Overhaul tutorials in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. So far we've been using a very bare bones install of Realism Overhaul, mainly using the stock parts, procedural parts and procedural fairings, and that's it. And we've landed a probe on the moon, and we've built a space shuttle, and you could basically do anything you do in stock in real solar system with the modified stock parts, modified by Realism Overhaul, and the procedural parts. And you don't need anything else, but it would be interesting to look at what other mods are available and so that's what this video is about. So we're only looking at the mods that are available on CCAN. There are plenty of mods that are available on the forums that might not be in CCAN and generally you should check the forums to see if there are any caveats or uh, problems between mods or stuff like that and look at what people say especially if you're having a problem. But for, for now we're going to stick to CCAN. And I'm going to go to compatible game versions and click 1.12. And that's because some of the stuff is marked 1.12.3 compatible, but not 1.12.5. Uh, so I'm just going to check mark that. So any 1.12 compatible thing will show up. Uh, in particular, RO Engines is apparently only uh, 1.12 point something else and not 1.12.5 compatible, for, uh, it was not showing up without that. So we want everything to show up properly. And so I'm going to talk about what I would use various mods that I've used with Realism Overhaul for. I'm only going to be talking about the ones that I've used with Realism Overhaul myself. And generally when I do Realism Overhaul installs, I have multiple installs that are specialized. One will be a historical install with, uh, for mission profiles and rocket profiles and stuff like that. And so it'll have a lot of historical rockets uh, and a variety of them. So the second install might be an RP-1 career install, but we don't need a variety of different models of engines for that. Uh, we just want one of each type basically. And so for that kind of install, we would default to the RO uh, packs. So these things, RO capsules, RO engines, RO heat shields and stuff like that. And But if you use those, they're going to try and hide the other models of the same type of engine or capsule or something like that. And for a historical uh, recreation thing, I might want to pick one of the other ones uh, just for various reasons. Maybe they're the right shape, they don't have uh, certain features or something like that. Like, yeah, it depends, of course. So for historical recreations, for artistic purposes, I might want one of the other uh, parts and then I wouldn't use these or try and get rid of the file uh, that would be high level modding uh, Trying to get rid of the file that is Overwriting the other ones or hiding the other ones. So but for these these will be for RP1 career uh, uh, I'll talk about the ones that are for a historical install and then I'll also have a plane install Which is what we have here the reason being that we're going to want very high quality ground stuff uh, scenery and stuff like that and if I'm going to have all that stuff, I don't want all the rocket stuff as well because I won't be able to run the game. So I have a plane install and then also a futuristic install because if I put near future parts and KSB Interstellar into an install, it's hard to have also all the historical stuff. And why would you, right? Uh, you wouldn't want to have all the ancient rockets of the 1950s and 60s when mainly you're going to be doing futuristic stuff in your install. And so the futuristic, futuristic install is like my solar system tourism series. That's one of those. And also maybe um, to Mars and beyond, that kind of series. So first off, we have the Buran and Energia mod. This would be a, in a historic install. Probably not RP1 compatible, uh, so not a career mode one. But this is if you want this particular rocket system. And it says it's RO compatible right there. But it's a uh, further development of an old mod that probably still works actually, but you know, it's been updated for 1.8 to 1.12. And I have used the older version before, and I think I tried out this version as well. Action groups extended. If you wanted more action groups, that's the way to go. Linux Group Gamer has, uh, is uh, updating many, many, many different mods, and it'll give you 250 action groups with in flight editing. If you want that actual sites airport I want for this install because that's one of those things we want with the planes we want a lot of airports to fly to so that I want but for the other installs unless you want alternate shuttle landing sites 
maybe uh, you won't need that. Advanced Fly-By-Wire I won't put in because I generally use Atmospheric Autopilot instead. They're sort of the same thing. There's a fly-by-wire, that's a fly-by-wire. They help you handle airplanes. If you're not doing airplanes or shuttles, you probably don't need them. Advanced Jet Engines is required, but there's Advanced Jet Engines Extended, which gives you more jet engines. And for a plane install, I definitely want more jet engines. AIES Aerospace is a very old part mod, and this is a patch for it by Linus Guru Gamer. And if you know you want a pod from it, otherwise the other stuff I don't think is necessary. But, uh, there are certain pods that have a distinctive look, and if you like that kind of pod, that might be the way to go. But otherwise, I wouldn't put it in. It's fairly old. But, uh, speaking of pods, we have Alcor Adopted. This is one of the nicest pods available. It has a great interior thanks to raster prop mod uh, well, ASET stuff. Here's raster prop monitor. I knew it would require it somewhere. Uh, so, yeah, it requires raster prop monitor, and it'll give you a lot of little flick switches, a lot of monitors to use, and unfortunately this is a plain install, so I don't need it, but otherwise I would put it in uh, definitely for a futuristic install. Modular launch pads, uh, if you're doing historical recreations, definitely put it in because it'll give you a variety of different launch pads that you can put up. Raider Nix, Antares, and Cygnus, if you're doing historical recreations of that kind of stuff, like for ISS missions, you will need that. And otherwise, I wouldn't put it into the other installs, and not this one. Uh, we saw up here with the Alcor pod that had ASEC Consolidated Props Pack, and that adds a lot of the flick switches and stuff like that. And those will be important for airplanes as well. So we'll include that in an airplane install, and also the avionics pack, which will have aircraft-style props, as it says up there. So that's important. Generally speaking, for realism overhaul, rover components, even if it's not marked RO compatible, they're rovers. They're not being modified by realism overhaul in any way in theory, so you can use rover stuff with realism overhaul, more or less. Aviation lights seems like a good idea for planes, and I have used it before. Avionic systems, I think I've used it before, but I wouldn't recommend it for anything other than planes. Bargain rockets pack would be funny if I put a RO config with it. Uh, I've used it before, but not with RO. Should do. BD Army Plus is for weapon systems, not usually used with realism overhaul, but for planes, I might want to like fit pylons and maybe some sidewinders or stuff like that, so I'll put it in just for that. Blackheart's procedural part textures. So let me just cover all the procedural part texture things at once. So I'll check mark that, and I recommend that you always check mark procedural part textures. And we already have procedural parts in, and what this will do is if you click Legacy Textures in the Procedural Tank dialog, it'll let you select from a slider various textures, and these are among those. So these will add more textures to that, so you don't have to use the recoloring UI. And also if we go down to Procedural Parts here, uh, we already have Procedural Parts installed, but we don't have these textures, so let's get these textures. And these will just give us more choices. So there's the complete texture pack, might as well. Uh, we don't need uh, essential textures and flags, well, might as well. But these four are included in the complete texture pack, and these two are not. Uh, these aren't part of main sailor stuff, so these are other things. And so now we've got all the procedural part textures in this list. Camera tools are good for if you want to do cinematics. Canaveral pads. Uh, if you want the scenery at Cape Canaveral, I recommend that. That will also re uh, require RSS Canaveral HD and Kerbal Constructs, Omega's Stock Light Structures, and Tundra Space Center. So those will add, these add buildings. A Kerbal Constructs allows you to place buildings in various locations, and RSS Cape Canaveral is the land terrain of Cape Canaveral. So all those we want for flying around, so that's fine. And if you're doing historical stuff, if your RP-1 career is located at Cape Canaveral, uh, that's all, or even if your futuristic install has you launching out Cape Canaveral, you want that. But it is, of course, resource intensive because it's additional scenery. Chatterer, uh, for a plane install, well, generally speaking, we want Chatterer. I haven't used it in a while though, weirdly. But Chatterer gives the Kerbals voices and they'll just chirp up every now and again and you'll have beeps from probes and stuff like that. Makes everything more lifelike. Generally recommended. Definitely RO compatible. 
Connected living space can be used with realism overhaul. I generally don't use it because it's just more of a hassle. Uh, so, but it, it is it is possible to use it. Contract configurator uh, won't be working with the RP1 career, and so these contract packs won't work with RP1 career, unfortunately. Crew manifest. I usually just use ship manifest. Custom barn kit is uh, included with RP1 when you install it. In fact, uh, as far as RP1 is concerned, you should just sort of do what they say if you can. Uh, well, what they say is actually do not select or install this directly. Instead, select RP1 Express Install and let it install this automatically unless you know what you're doing and can fix it yourself. I did install this directly because I know what I'm doing and can fix it myself. But, uh, but also, the RP1 Express install doesn't seem to be listed here anymore, so that's a little bit weird. Yeah, well, if you can find the Express install, do that. But for your RP1 career, I recommend if you're doing a career mode for Realism Overhaul, just install what you can with the RP1 selection, uh, its requirements, and the recommended mods, and don't install anything else for a bit until you know that you really, really need it. Otherwise, you're going to overload it with things, and it's going to be a mess. So... I probably won't talk about the specific stuff for RP1 anymore. So we're at Custom Barn Kit, which will be installed by RP1. Custom Pre-Launch Checks is required by other things. I don't install it separately. Dang it. Uh, random Failures. If you want more Random Failures than you're already getting with Kerbalism, maybe. I have used it with Realism Overhaul before. It's not impossible. Daily Reentry used to be required by Realism Overhaul, but now we have Real Heat, and so you don't need it, and it wasn't installed by it. Uh, I think mainly it exists because it still has some interesting heat shield parts, but I probably wouldn't use it just in case. Deep freeze for your futuristic installs would be great. That allows you to put the Kerbals into cryogenic sleep and then thaw them out when they need to do stuff. So uh, that's very futuristic. Distant object enhancements as a visual mod, I recommend for everything. So just put that in. Oh, here's the express. Okay, all right, found it, found it. I don't know why they put it like this. They should write the name exactly like it is here, uh, instead of saying RP1 Express Install. Th why is this name different? Gosh darn it. Okay, so here we go. They they're telling you to use this one uh, instead of the RP1 Install down there. Okay, so go ahead and use this one. But why why do you have the name not have RP1 in front is beyond me. Extra planetary launch pads, I've wanted to use Realism Overhaul, but I've never actually d successfully done it. I put it in installs, but I've never actually put it to use. For historical installs, I would definitely put FASA, and I wouldn't put the RO packs, and I'd have a selection of options. Or I'd put the RO packs and then delete the thing that makes them hide the other parts. So, yeah, but FASA, I've used historical launches before. And it's got the Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo pods, and the rockets. Everything you need for Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo is included. So go ahead and use it. Uh, it the parts are very old. It's a very old mod. but And there are probably some better looking parts now. But it, you can't really beat it for convenience in that. It's very focused on just Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo. So if you really want to focus on Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo, this is a convenient way to go. Filter extensions is generally used for other things. Fire Spitter has a lot of airplane parts and helicopter parts, so I'll include it in this one. A lot of stuff requires the plugin from Fire Spitter, which is this, but they'll just install that on their own, so you won't have to select it separately. Flight Manager for reusable stages is for reusable rockets, and it'll let you launch a payload and then jump back to the time when the rockets separated the stages and let you take the stage down, the Falcon 9 stage, for instance, or something like that. And so if you really want to go through all that, you can use it. Or you could do the other way, which is stage recovery, and you didn't just pretend it was recovered with stage recovery, and then proceed like that. So it depends on whether you want to jump back to the first stage or not. Um, when I used FMRS a long time ago, it was, it, it was a little bit more glitchy. It's probably okay now. Technically, you can use other plant packs like Galileo with Realism Overhaul. Realism Overhaul doesn't actually require a real solar system. It's just better, a better idea to use real solar system with Realism Overhaul. So, I wonder if this is the H2 that I use or not. Um, no, I don't think so. So this is an H2, but I don't know if it's RO compatible. 
There was another Japanese launch vehicle mod that was separate, but I don't think it's on CCAN. Hellcam VDS gives you cameras that you can place around the thing that you can switch uh, between using minus and plus. So that will be good. Uh, that'll be good for if you're trying to do little cameras mounted on the rocket for simulated rocket launches. Infernal Robotics. Well, that is for our robotic needs. In this case, I would use it for swing wings, potentially. So that's why I'm putting it in, but robotic arms and other hinges and rotators, that's what that's for. James Webb, if you want a James Webb Space Telescope would be good. Uh, may need some, well, uh, it depends. Uh, I haven't used this version with uh, RO yet. Forget if it needs any tweaking. Kerbal Alarm Clock, if you're running a lot of missions, of course that helps you keep track of it. Kerbal Aircraft Extension seems like a good idea, but no guarantee that these are RO compatible, but I generally make my own RO patches for these sorts of things, so I, uh, I think that's KAX, and I definitely have an RO patch for it. So a lot of these things I also have RO patches for. Kerbal Foundries actually includes uh, the adjustable landing gear, so if you need landing gear of any kind, uh, definitely include this. It'll have, give you more landing gear options instead of the stock landing gear. We saw with the shuttle, uh, we had landing gear issues. And now we'll probably want tweak scale. Let's just get tweak scale in really fast. Um, tweak scale, rescale everything. Yes, please. Okay. Well, there's the tweak scale redistributable in here. Library for other mods to integrate with tweak scale. Does not provide the actual tweak scale features. Gosh darn it. <laughs> No, I want all the tweak scale features. Okay, let's pick up where we left off. Kerbal inventory system. We already have an inventory system in KSP 1.12, but you might consider it. It is a different way of doing things and gives you other options for role play. So there's that. Wearable KIS props. I'm still interested. Note that it requires Fire Spitter Core. Lots of stuff requires Fire Spitter Core, but it'll install it for you. Kerbal constructs. So we uh, installed already, but I'm going to pick it anyway. So it'll let you place buildings and other structures. I use it to place entire terrains. And not that that would be a good idea. And I've switched away from doing that. Kerbal planetary base systems, I used to have an RO config for. I don't know if it's RO compatible, but it's got great base modules for a futuristic situation where you're setting up bases on places. Kerbalism, of course, will be with RP1, and uh, if you want pain and suffering, it's got the life support, quality of life. Don't use it with TAC life support. Radiation, malfunctions, signals, and space weather, and all that business. But you will need to use the Realism Overhaul config with it, so check mark that too, if you're using it outside of RP1 for roleplay purposes. Kerbcam is another camera mod. And I'll just toss all of those in because you can never have, I, I never end up using them, but I always want to, uh, to get nice camera views and custom camera situations. Again, a lot of these look interesting, but I haven't used them before, so I won't talk about them. Construction goes with the USI mods. I have a RO config for them just to barely make them RO compatible. And uh, if, uh, there are a whole bunch of base mods. So construction goes along with those. It says docking ports, cranes, magnets, and other construction equipment. And then USI by Rover Dude has uh, USI Core, Exploration Pack, and Colonization Systems is the main one with the base modules and station modules. Very nice stuff. And I've used it with Realism Overhaul before with my own patches, though. So I wish they would just patch them. I think it's fairly simple to do so. But yeah. Uh, those would be good for futuristic stuff, not for the other installs. Copernicus, of course, adds the planets so that we can have real solar system. KOS, if you want to script your rocket so that it launches on its own, you write a little program. KOS is a very nifty little customized program uh, pro programming language that you can use. It won't be useful for a plane install, but for my historical install, what I would do is I would uh, write the script for the rocket and turn off the UI so that we can just get the rocket launching and have KOS control the rocket to orbit and then make a nice little cinematic out of it.
So that's how the rock profiles and mission profiles are made. I don't generally use it otherwise. I like to control my rockets, normally speaking. So uh, it it would do it for you in that case. There is also K uh, RPC. This is another option. Instead of having its own programming languages, the programming language, this has the ability to connect to other languages like Python, C++, C Sharp, Java, and Lua, and communicate with the game with those programs over a connection. So that's a lot more complicated, but it gives you more flexibility if you already know those languages. But KOS is very, very attuned to what KSP in itself is doing, so it's a lot easier. So yeah, but yeah, it's up to you. Those are options for scripting your rocket. Okay, KSA IVA upgrade. So uh, we've s spoken a little bit about a raster prop monitor in relation to the ASAP props and stuff like that. Uh, this also uses raster prop monitor and it'll modify the stock Mark One pods and cockpits. That should be fine with realism overhaul, maybe. But realism overhaul sort of scales things up, so it might look weird. Uh, so because uh, it's scaling up the exterior, the cockpits you might not be able to see out of. And that's an important thing to note. But also, I don't generally use this one. I usually use the Mark I cockpit IVA replacement and these instead. But it might be better looking. I don't know. It's possible. KSP Interstellar Extended. It's not technically RO compatible, but you can use it. And I do use it with my futuristic install. It'll all be marked non-RO. And basically, I made a patch to just mark them all RO compatible and lift it at that. Uh, but it's got its own peculiar system of how to make things seem balanced and realistic. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's a whole separate thing. Uh, it's a whole world with KSP Interstellar. KSP Wheel is required for by a lot of mods. I'll throw it in anyway just in case, but uh, basically anything with wheels these days might be uh, useful with that. It changes the a collider. KW Rocketry was a big time mod back in the day. Uh, these days I only use it for one part and it's the S2 Ullage rocket. It's my go-to Separatron. I basically delete all the other parts from it. But uh, it is RO compatible if you want to use the parts from it. But um, it's mainly tanks and engines. So they're, they're not the best models for what you might be doing in Realism Overhaul. Like Lesser Labs would be for a futuristic install. And it has sort of rectangular cross-section parts that look very futuristic and unique. You won't get parts like this from any other mod. The problem is scaling them properly for our purposes in Realism Overhaul is a trick. And again, I use my own little RO patch for it. So uh, if you need that, tell me. If you're using Lackluster Labs parts, you'll want the extra parts as well. If you have suggestions for what I should write a RO patch for, please tell me. Uh, people have given me suggestions before, but I keep forgetting. I need to work on RO patches. Near future should be RO compatible um, to varying degrees, though, because it gets updated sometimes. Uh, though probably not anymore or so much. But uh, yeah, uh, I don't know to what degree they're all RO compatible. But definitely a futuristic install should have them. Taking a look in here, we could check. If you're wondering whether something's RO compatible, go to RO, uh, RO suggested mods. And we have near future technologies here. And it seems like it's got aeronautics, construction, exploration, launch vehicles, propulsion, electrical, RCS, solar, and spacecraft here. So there you have it, you know. And for anything else, uh, the problem is sometimes the name in here doesn't match the name in here. But like Kerbal Foundries is here and all that business. So, yep, that's one way of checking that. So futuristic, futuristic install for that. Nova Punch is like one of the oldest mods. It's actually a combination of two of the oldest mods for, uh, for Kerbal Space Program. And it is certainly compatible, but... I don't see much use for it anymore, unfortunately. Maybe if you like one of the command modules from it. Planet Shine, I definitely use for visual purposes. Raster Prop Monitor, obviously, it'll be installed by other things, but I'll install it altogether anyway. 
And again, that's interior stuff, IVAs and props for your interiors. If you're not doing planes, well, yeah, um, it depends on whether you're going to be inside the vehicles much or not. If you're not, then you don't need to use it. Real antennas will be used with uh, RP1 Career. I generally wouldn't use it for anything else, but if you're role-playing something in an historical install, I could see that. We're using the highest level RSS textures. Again, if you're having RAM issues, the game won't load. Uh, dump Parallax first and then use one of the lower texture packs for RSS if just removing Parallax is not enough. Remote Tech used to be to go to Antenna System for Realism Overhaul, but now it seems like Real Antennas has superseded it. Real Antennas is more complicated than Remote Tech, amazingly enough. Repo Soft Tech is required by other things. I don't include it separately. Restock will change the look of the stock parts. And so if you wanted a completely uh, stock-ish install, so stock plus procedural parts like and procedural fairings that we've been using, you can still use restock uh, to modify stuff. And re restock and restock plus are RO compatible, as you can see here. And this is Raynix miscellaneous parts. One thing, I think it had an inflatable module, which was handy. So it had one of those... Um, well, big little parts, if I recall correctly. I would only use these RO packs for RP1 Career, again, because they try to wipe out or hide other parts. Uh, but uh, if you can figure out how to get rid of the file that makes them hide the other parts, then maybe you could use these. So we have RSS Visual Enhancements High Resolution already. Uh, there is uh, RSS Canaveral, which will give higher resolution textures to Cape Canaveral. I've already talked about that. It works with Canaveral pads. In fact, it's required by Canaveral pads to already be installed, but I'll check mark it anyway. So if you're doing stuff out of Cape Canaveral, that's certainly a thing if you have the resources to run it, but it is it has some resource requirements. RSS exp expansion is for other planetary bodies that aren't included in real solar system. So if you want more places to explore, or if you're doing a historical recreation where the body in question is not included in real solar system, you might want to try RSS expansion out to see if it includes it. Again, more resources, it has more textures involved, so be careful. Rare Nick Salyut stations, uh, good for the historical uh, install, and uh, well, essential for the historical install. Every historical install I've had has all of the Raider Nick mods in, so we'll just talk about those right away. Salyut stations, and down here with the Soviet probes, Soviet rockets, and Soviet spacecraft, definite for historical install. They're the way to go for the historical stuff. And uh, we have the U.S. stuff as well. So those are down here. U.S. probes, U.S. rockets, definitely have those. And where's Skylab? Skylab must be around here somewhere. Skylab. Radio Nix Skylab. So those are in my historical install. Where was Blue Dog Design Bureau? Is it not in... Uh... Blue Dog, I guess, is not on CCAN. Blue Dog is another option, I think. Blue Dog Design Bureau is compatible. It's, uh, yeah, so that's an option too. But I would lean towards... Uh, personally, I've used the Radio Nick mods for RO. I use Blue Dog for JNSQ. So I do Raider Nick plus FASA for RO. Ship Manifest is, I always put in, it's the easiest way to dump fuel and stuff like that. And also transfer the Kerbals from one thing to another. In this case, I'll be using it to dump fuel from the planes if necessary. I don't foresee that that would be necessary, but maybe. Shuttle Orbiter Construction Kit, I do wonder whether that's these days compatible. Uh, yes, Sock. Uh, I, I haven't tried it myself because I usually use the Space Shuttle System mod uh, instead, but if you want to use Shuttle Orbiter Construction Kit, apparently it is compatible with Realism Overhaul. I don't know to what degree because I haven't tried it myself, but it is there. Stage Recovery, well, there's the other option except for FMRS for your recovery needs. This one is simpler. Here's my mod, Shearstrut Engines. So, generic engines and RCS thrusters for realism overhaul, not pretending to be anything in particular, but they'll give a variety of other options that aren't as common. 
so they're they're all properly realistic, uh, but they'll give different looks and they have sort of nicer textures. I feel like I mean I I would say so myself. Uh, I would probably use them in uh, futuristic install. I mean, of course, there's still realistic fuels, not realistic, currently used fuels and oxidizers. But as far as RP1, they're not compatible with RP1. Sock extensions has some interesting parts. I think it does have some cockpits as well. So I'll put that in. But it has a lot of parts that I wouldn't be using, so I'll probably go in and delete a whole bunch of stuff just to save space and RAM space. Terabee, uh, generally used with RP1, I think. I don't know if they use it anymore for those parts. Tentara's I had used before. That's another option for Soviet spacecraft, and I believe it is... Yeah, there's Terabee and there's Tentara's. They are RO compatible. Test Light is a sort of lightweight version of Test Flight if you want to use that for engine failure needs. So it'll be compatible with anything that's compatible with Test Flight already. So Test Flight is for engine failures and it has various things here. And RP1 will generally use it. So career mode stuff. Texture Replacer uh, for Skyboxes. And I, I will put it in. Uh, I use it to implement a uh, custom skybox, uh, so that'll be the stars and all that stuff. And also you can personalize Kerbals and change their suits and stuff like that. And there are a lot of uh, options available if you go to the forum page for Texture Replacer. Toolbar, Blizzy's Toolbar. Um, it's just a smaller toolbar, and you can sometimes move some of the icons from the big toolbar on the right hand side to the small toolbar, Blizzy's toolbar, and that makes it more compact and I like it that way so that I don't have to scroll through the big toolbar. Some only some mods will use that though. Trajectory predictions I haven't used recently, but uh maybe we should for space shuttles, I don't know how well it works, but um I'll put it into something else, not this particular plane install. But it'll show you your, your trajectories and let you plan your landing a little bit better through an atmosphere. And that might be helpful for Mars as well. Transfer Window Planner, of course, if you're doing stuff to other planets, just put in everything except for a plane install. <laughs> uh, I think that's safe to say. Always use Transfer Window Planner, but not for an airplane install. Universal Storage I used to use a lot. It has some nifty parts. I'd like to use that again. I forget if it's RO compatible. It is. Yeah. Nifty little parts that the Kerbals can manipulate too. Again, uh, US probes and rockets for your history installs. USI for base construction and rovers and stuff like that. And I have makeshift RO configs for it. Venstock revamp has been used with RO for a long time now, and they will change the look of the stock parts uh, more so than restock, and you can't use it with restock. It's like a different kind of restock. And I think that wraps it up for the ones I know of. So, there are a lot of other mods available on the forums that I haven't talked about, and, uh, well, that's a little bit more complicated to access though because I don't have a convenient list. For now, this should do. If you have any other mods that you think uh, should be mentioned for Realism Overhaul, uh, just mention them in the comments and what they are used for and what kind of install you would use them in, and that would be helpful. Uh, I'm sure you guys know a lot of the other mods here that I'm not familiar with, and so you can recommend them as it is. And also tell me if you think some mods should be made RO compatible and I'll try and take a look at that, though of course that takes time, so we'll see. So with that, thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video, if you did please do press like, if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.